Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Armin from Satoru. I'm a security engineer. I actually didn't verify uh, liquid staking protocols, but I have some ideas I'd like to share with you. Uh, and maybe this talk would have been a little more technical if the right people were here. Um, so yeah, let's first ask some basic questions, right? What is liquid staking? Maybe what is staking? So, you know, you stake value to back up your validation, right? You help uh, create this consensus and part of the thing you give up is the ability to use your funds. So they're locked up um, and the validators are rewarded for their work and then, you know, but they also have to lock up their, you know, value, their ETH in order to do this work. So liquid staking, right, I'm sure you know, you, you kind of get, you stake the value, but then you, um, you get some receipt token, which enables you to still utilize your money in other ways, other than just, uh, you know, being there in case you do something wrong uh, while you're validating. So now you get to both stake and use your ETH. Um, and you know, the rewards, uh, uh, maybe more specifically in the Lido case are distributed more evenly and, you know, more consistently and the validators that are uh, validating and are like uh, the stakers that are uh, staked to validating uh, to validators and they're taking part in consensus should earn rewards and, uh, you know, you must be part of the consensus layer and it, you know, it takes time to enter and exit uh, this consensus layer. So here's a little diagram of, you know, how this, this all happens. You know, you stake your ETH, you get some derivative, you, the derivative, uh, you know, represents the rewards you earn uh, for the ETH that you staked uh, for the job that the validator does. So now we want to think of some properties about uh, this system. You know, obviously you need to have uh, a way to ensure that your stake ETH can be redeemed for ETH. Otherwise, you know, the receipt would have no value and it would just be uh, an empty token. So, um, yeah, you need to, you know, either in an open way or you, you're, you're a trustworthy uh, person or system or protocol that people are willing to, you know, trust and say, okay, you know, it's redeemable, uh, that needs to happen. So, uh, but it needs, it, there's two parts to it. There's the solvency part, so if there is enough ETH to pay back, and then there's the denial of service part. So you need both to be true. You need both to have enough ETH to pay everyone that has this receipt, and also you need to ensure somehow that no one can deny the service and say, actually, we're not gonna, we're just gonna choose not to uh, redeem your receipt, right? So the solvency, is uh, maybe less logical, the denial of service can be logical, or also, you know, centralization risk. Um, but yeah, so that's one property. You have another property that's uh, maybe less easy to implement and, and, and a little abstract, where you have this like, you know, you, you want STE to be close to E. It's not, if you, if you think about it abstractly, it's not necessarily always greater than, because you can, uh, like go in and immediately get slashed where it'd be, you know, the value would be less. But, so you can't really write a property that says the value of STETH is greater than, but yeah, it's a, it's a property that uh, something like that holds in the protocol. You know, you, you also have this, uh, it's distributed evenly for all the people that have been participating in the consensus the whole time. Um, we'll look at this a little bit. Uh, more closely, and then you also want to make sure that it's distributed to only validating stakers. So, um, you know, these are some properties, and then you can get more specific, you know, you can't duplicate signatures, and, you know, these, this is maybe what you would hear about more if the person that uh, did the verification of this project was here, but unfortunately he's not able to make it, but, yeah, so you have more uh, specific properties that you can check. Um, but I'll go into this like no free money property. Um, so basically you wanna say that you can't just, right, you can't just stake 
when you see that a validator mine uh, validated a block and earned rewards, and then right after that, just unstake and earn those rewards, even though you weren't taking part of consensus when those rewards were distributed. Um, so this is kind of like a core uh, property of you know any liquid staking, I think where you know you should only be earning rewards and even just staking right you shouldn't be earning rewards when you're not doing the work that you're supposed to be earning the rewards for but with liquid staking it's like this uh different front end where you can maybe you know dupe the logic and and uh because there's a lot of problems right if you make people wait at first maybe they don't earn the rewards they're they needed to or if they if you make them wait before exiting then you know some complications could arise but yeah, the core idea is you can't gain by depositing and immediately uh, requesting to withdraw. And if you do gain, then you're basically stealing from everybody else that is taking part of, in consensus. And, you know, uh, that's not what we want. So here's a little rule um, that we implemented. I, uh, you can kind of see it's, it's pretty abstract, but uh, I can walk through it a little bit, you know, you have like the variables that are passed in that are going to be arbitrary, uh, you know, the, the first thing you see is the submit, that's kind of like a deposit, so you, you send some amount of money in and then you start requesting the withdrawal, you see it, you request it, you finalize, you claim withdrawal, so it's a, it's a, it's a long process, but if you get everything done immediately, at the end, you could see the assert is that the, the balance after is not greater than the balance before, right? Because um, in, this, in this call trace, you wouldn't have any change in time, so you wouldn't be spending any time uh, in consensus. You wouldn't be spending any time actually adding value to the system, so you shouldn't earn any rewards, so your balance shouldn't increase. Uh, and, and yeah, this, this property was implemented while we were verifying the LIDO protocol. I, I don't have a run result um, available, but I thought it'd still be useful to show you this, give you an idea of some properties and that it's possible to implement and, and verify them, you know, on interesting protocols. Yeah, so shorter talk than others. I went eight instead of six, but yeah, happy to take any questions. Uh, all right, thank you. <laughs>